Hi, this is me answering the third question, which is actually the fourth question, but I skipped one question because it's a question we cannot really answer. The question I skipped is about uh, if the women who are accusing these Mongols are doing it to get money. We don't know. Some of them, maybe. Some of them not. For some of them it's a combination. And I really don't give a fuck. It's not relevant. What's relevant is that people are speaking up and the truth is coming out. So, the third question which I want to answer is how does this movement help others? Does it make them more sad or cause more anxiety? It's a wonderful question. Yes, it can make you feel more anxiety. It can make you sad. That's what's happening to me. What happened to me last week. <coughs> I really felt a lot of sadness, like, even like uh, temporary depression, reading all those stories. And most of all, most of the stories I read were people talking about what happened to them, but they didn't mention how they learned to live with it and how or how they got over it or how they healed their pain and the trauma so honestly don't know if people are doing this or if they're still walking around with a big wound and didn't heal it um, continuing with your life moving on doesn't mean you healed it uh, building up safety measures doesn't mean you healed it. So, this is also a question that I'm actually asking. I know it's impolite to answer a question by a question, but yeah, I would love to hear when people tell the stories, how are you dealing with it? What have you done? What are you doing? And what will you be doing? And what are the effects of what you have been doing? And what are the effects on your life? Before and after you healed, if you already healed. Because sometimes these tragic events can have very beautiful side effects or end results. People who have experienced traumatic events often use this experience to start to do good. They start an NGO, they start charity, they start helping others, they start sharing, whatever. So, yeah, if you're one of those, let's say, lucky people who and it's not really lucky, but let's say those who manage to transform the pain into something else, no matter what, please do share. Even if you've shared already your story, just, just share what, what are you doing about it, or what have you done about it, or what would you like to do about it. Because yes, first step is to say, hey, shit happened to me. Okay, we acknowledge it. And we respect you and appreciate you for saying it out loud, maybe for the first time ever in your life. We truly respect you for that. And you're helping already a lot of others by doing it. Now. What are you doing to help yourself? Because you deserve 
to enjoy life again. You deserve to be happy again. And if you do not know what to do, that's okay. Ask. Say it out loud. I have no clue what to do. I really don't know if I can even resolve this shit. Say it. And you'll be surprised. People will come to you and start sharing with you how they were in exactly the same situation or in a similar situation, having this a similar feeling of desperation. But they did manage to find a way. And you do not need to copy them, but it may inspire you. And there are professionals who are helping people with this. And I personally favor professionals who have gone through it themselves, at least through traumatic events and learned to deal with them. These people talk from experience. They're not theorists who learned it at school, who read it in a book. I personally feel, and that's also what I get back as feedback from my clients, is that they can feel that I really have empathy for them. Not empathy theoretically, no. In practice, they can feel that I care. They, can, they feel that I feel them, that I feel that pain. Of course, doesn't mean that I need to go through the trauma as well, but I can feel that pain. So I know. And that's also how I know how to help them. How to guide them so they find the answers they're looking for. How I guide them to find the solutions, the ways to deal with it. And all the questions, all the answers to all your questions, they're inside you. They're not in somebody else. They're inside you. Other people can help you get inside yourself and find the answers. Because I believe that everything that happens in a lifetime happens for a very good reason. We just need to find that reason. We just need to see that reason. We'll find it in here. So, getting back to the question. So, I talked about the anxiety. Talked about the sadness. Actually, I answered everything already. So, in short, to recapitulate, you speaking out loud are helping others by encouraging others. You who are reading other people's stories or watching other people's videos, you may feel anxiety again, you may feel, feel depressed, you may feel pain. But hey, maybe that's exactly what you need. Maybe that's the process you need to go through. Maybe that is what will bring you back, out from here, back into here. And then start to feel, why is this hurting me so much? Because everything that's happening outside us that hurts us on the inside, it means it's triggering something inside us, it's pushing a button. So, go look for that button that's pushed and see where it's coming from. What's the root of the button? That's how you resolve it. So, that's my main message. Go inside. By yourself or with some help. And find the root. The day it happened, you are a victim. The day after, you may still feel a victim. But you do not need to stay a victim the rest of your life. I know it's very common in many, many cultures to do a lot of affirmation. And I see this is happening, for example, for Alcohol Anonymous or 
for people addicted to drugs. And they always start by saying, I'm an alcoholic. This is my name and I'm an alcoholic. It doesn't work. And that's why these people keep going to these meetings for many years. And then something may happen in their life and puff, they're back. Because if you keep saying, I'm an addict, keep saying, I'm a victim, keep saying, I'm a this, I'm a that, unconsciously you're programming yourself to be that, to stay that, whatever it is you're saying. I suggest very strongly to immediately stop doing that. Stop saying that you're a victim. Stop saying that you're an addict. Start saying who you truly are on the inside. Start feeling it. And start saying that. Because there is where you're going to find your strength. And that strength will help you to heal whatever came on your path in this lifetime. That's how you will manage to resolve your pain, to resolve your problems, and to grow happy again. And I made plenty of videos about this. And I even started a program for this. Because way too many people keep walking around in circles, in that dark corner of their lives. And then others keep them there by going like, oh, poor you, poor you, poor you, poor you, poor you, poor you, all the time. Now, that can be your first reaction, but you shouldn't keep people in that position. Yes, I know, some people are doing it unconsciously because that is how they can feel they're the saviors. Parents are doing that with their kids. <gasps> oh, my kid dropped, oh! And they go in panic and every time, oh, and they take the kid and hug him and whatever, and they keep doing that. So when the kid wants attention, he goes, ah! And whoop, the parents come. And this happens with adults as well. So be a little bit smarter than that. Start focusing on who you truly are, what your true strength is, what you can do with it, all the beautiful things you can do with it. And I guarantee you, your life will transform.